So today I wanna to talk to you about Thunderbolt 5 and whether or not you should upgrade to Thunderbolt 5 if you're using Thunderbolt 4. Now, I do have two different docks that I'll be using for the video. I have the Avanki Fusion Dock Pro 3, which is a Thunderbolt 5 dock, as well as the Fusion Dock Max 1, which is a Thunderbolt 4 dock. I have tested both of these docks and I have videos on my channel if you wanna check out the differences between the docks individually or see an individual review. But for this video, we're just gonna be discussing the different differences between Thunderbolt 4 and 5, and whether or not it's something that you should look into upgrading if you're already utilizing Thunderbolt 4. So without further ado, let's hop into some quick data points between the differences of Thunderbolt 4 and Thunderbolt 5, and then we'll hop into the comparison of the actual docks, finishing up with what I do day to day for my workflow. All right, so first I just wanna get all the technical stuff out of the way. So I did make some like charts that we're gonna go through on the computer and I've put all of those in the video and we're just gonna walk through that so that we can see the differences between Thunderbolt 4 and Thunderbolt 5. And so on paper, the jump from Thunderbolt 4 to Thunderbolt 5 is pretty massive, but what do the numbers actually mean for you day to day? Like how relevant is it for your workflow? That's really what's most important here. And so, as you can see here, the Thunderbolt 5 actually doubles the total bandwidth from 40 to 80 gigabits per second. And it also introduces something new, which is bandwidth boost. And that gives you up to 120 gigabits, but that's only for displays. So it can support insanely high refresh rates for up to three 4K monitors. It can also do multiple 8K monitors, which is something that is new. Uh, Thunderbolt 4 could only do a single 8K monitor uh, or dual 4K monitors at 60 Hertz. So Thunderbolt 5 on paper is looking to be quite a bit better. Now, power delivery also gets a pretty big jump here. So you'll see that Thunderbolt 4 is gonna go from 100 watts, whereas Thunderbolt 5 jumps that up to 240 watts. Networking and data speeds also get a boost. So Thunderbolt 4 was stuck at 10 gigabits and Thunderbolt 5 now has 20. So you're gonna get higher networking, higher data speeds. That means like things like external SSDs and stuff like that is gonna get a boost in speed as well, just because we're gonna be getting more PCIe lanes. So the PCIe Express speed on Thunderbolt 4 was 32 gigabits per second, which is the equivalent of PCIe 3.0. And then on Thunderbolt 5, they basically jumped that up to 4.0, which is 64 gigabits per second. So now I just wanna talk a little bit about why Thunderbolt 4 is still a really good choice for most people. And I really think the most important thing here is just gonna be cost. You're getting way more for your money if you stick with Thunderbolt 4. Any dock you're gonna buy is gonna have way more ports. It's gonna be way more compact in comparison to a Thunderbolt 5 dock. The performance of Thunderbolt 4 is still excellent. Read write speeds on Thunderbolt 4 using external drives. If you're using a Thunderbolt 4 enclosure plugged into a Thunderbolt 4 port, exceed the read write speeds of the internal drive on say my M4 Mac mini. And so for most people, I think it's gonna be great. It supports multiple 4K displays and I just don't think that there's any reason why your average consumer probably needs or could justify upgrading to Thunderbolt 5. But if you're someone who's just like, I need the latest and greatest, and you have the money to do it, then by all means, I'm not telling you how to spend your money. Or if you're someone who's a content creator and you just need that raw horsepower because you're working with like 8K raw files, then I made another chart here and you can see that a 7.3 terabyte file for 8K RAW, if you were trying to transfer that on Thunderbolt 4, you're looking at almost an hour, 44 and a half minutes, which is just crazy just to transfer the file. Whereas on Thunderbolt 5, that cuts that down to 17.8 minutes. And if you haven't heard time is money, this is a perfect example of that. Now, if we take a closer look at the two docks, we're gonna start with the Fusion Dock Max 1. Now this is the Thunderbolt 4 dock from Avanki. They were kind enough to provide this to me free of charge for review. 
And if we just look at the front and the back, we're gonna take a look at the ports really quickly. I'm not gonna read off every single port, but I just wanna give you a quick look at what you get with the Fusion Dock Max 1. Okay, now we're gonna do the exact same thing for the Fusion Dock Pro 3. This is the Thunderbolt 5 dock from Avanki. It was also provided to me free of charge for review. And I just wanna take a quick look at the actual ports and then take note of the form factor on this one because it is slightly different from the other one. And then we'll do a comparison showing them side by side so you can kind of see what the footprint is that they would take up on your desk. So as you can see, the Fusion Dock Pro 3 is a lot longer, but it is slightly shorter than the Fusion Dock Max 1. So it does take up quite a bit more space, especially when you consider the fact that the Fusion Dock Max 1 can be put in both a vertical or horizontal configuration. And so that really maximizes your desk space and your desk layout when using that dock in particular. So I know I told you that we talk about what my current setup is for everything that I do for both personal stuff as well as content creation. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and flip my camera around here. And you can see that I am using the Fusion Dock Pro 3. It is the Thunderbolt 5 dock from Avanki. And I do wanna caveat this that both of these docks are very good docks. And the only reason I'm using the Thunderbolt 5 dock is because both of these docks were provided to me free of charge for review. And so since I have both of them, I'm just gonna go ahead and use the newer one that has the higher bandwidth and the higher data. And so if I didn't have that, I would just opt for the Fusion Dock Max 1 if I was spending my own money on this because I personally, I don't have a need for Thunderbolt 5 per se. I'm not doing anything. I don't edit 8K, I don't edit 8K RAW. I don't even have a camera that can shoot 8K. I don't have a monitor, you know what I mean? So the I just feel like at this point in time, Thunderbolt 5 is kind of a waste of money. Thunderbolt 4 is probably gonna be very effective for 95% of the people out there. And then the 5%, by all means, go get Thunderbolt 5. I really hope this video was helpful for everybody. If you have any questions at all about anything that you saw in this video, hit me up down in the comments and I'll try and get back to you as soon as I can. Now, the bottom line here is that you can't go wrong with either one of these docks. They're both fantastic and I don't think that you can make a bad choice if you had to pick between the two. Again, if I was spending my own money on this, I would just stick with the Fusion Dock Max 1 and Thunderbolt 4 because I just don't personally have a use case for Thunderbolt 5. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. So if it was helpful for you, I would appreciate it if you could subscribe to my channel and hit that like button because it helps push this video out to a broader audience. I'm gonna put links down in the description for both of the docs that were in this video. So if you wanna check those out, you'll be able to get more information. But that's about all I have for this one. So so thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.